We think that when creativity happens, it just it happens sort of magically, um, and that there are either really highly structured um, sort of traditional environments or there are creative environments where you don't have to put any structure on it. Um, but with design thinking, what we're saying is that there's a, a highly structured environment that fosters creativity. hands-on experience it gets you to actually see and not just see from a seat it gets you involved in the problem and helping helping it build a solution the students stop what they're doing and we call those stop drop and design days and they work on the design challenges we basically are given a question and then we have to come up with all of these solutions to answer that question the ninth grade of the quarter four uh, challenge is how might we ensure our community has access to healthy clean water We have been incorporating the topic of water in, in all of math, English, um, social studies, and science. First day of the design challenge, we pass out packets and we pass out journals to the students. We got interview questions here, answers that they gave us. Near, this is like the insight of like what we saw. It's very important for them to know the steps, to have that structure. I know all the steps. And I really do think it's important. The, the phases that we teach and that we talk about are empathy, define, ideate, prototype, feedback, and reflect. It then gives them the structure that they need to come up with these ideas that can go beyond the structure. It just becomes second nature for you. During the empathy phase, we want to get students out into the, the community, into the field, learning about uh, the problem or issue at hand. And we want to provide experiences for them that give them a hook into that, that have them start to care about the issue. And particularly to develop empathy for a particular person or group of people that um, have a perspective or have some experience with that issue. Empathy is basically putting yourself in somebody else's shoes and just seeing how would your user feel about you know, a certain situation. The teachers should have the students go out instead of just being in one classroom doing a project. They should go out and interact with other people. Have the kids make like go places that have to do with the design challenge. Or going outside the school and questioning, going to a building, asking about their water crisis or something, or anything that they feel like might help them with their project. So you know they can get moving and learn stuff to hands on. And hook that um, gets, gets students interested in a particular problem and gives them a place to sort of land and, and a user to think about. You have to design for the specific need of the user. And the tank is filled with bacteria and we're going to use the bacteria to eat the organics. We stopped and talked to a chemist. Why is the plants growing inside like We stopped and talked to the guy who runs the control panel. First thing we have Someone asks a question and you can build off of their question at the plant, then build off of their question. You prep them beforehand. Get them to write out questions first, because if we just took them there and they didn't have any questions already written, then it would be hard for them just to come up with questions off the top of their head. Exactly. How many stages are there to the water Uh At this point, there's three. The, uh, the sewage products that we use for cleaning and unclogging uh, sinks and toilets and stuff, we can definitely use non-toxic solutions to, to help preserve uh, the earth. A keynote presentation just on the water crisis and we're going to talk about um, the water crisis in India and in Africa because um, there was a few teachers here that went to those places and then they talked about it. Mm -hmm. They talked to us about it. Today is the day I announced that I'm working with the UN to bring awareness to the world's water crisis. The video we saw was the Water for Life. It was about the Water for Life Foundation but yeah. it was about Jay-Z. And on my first world tour, I saw firsthand what it's like to be without this precious resource. In Luanda, Angola, I met Bella, who showed me how her family survives on only two small buckets of water a day, and how she passed open sewage just to get to school. In the video, it was a girl named Bella. She was around our age, and she had to go for four hours to go look for water. And so it impacted me in the drive of um, the question because 
uh, she was my age, and I was just basically, you know, saying how would it feel to be her. Actions, what you heard, feelings, thoughts, and what, what are their thoughts, what do you think that they're thinking. So it's all user-centered, not any of us-centered. Um, get sticky notes, write down anything you want, whether it's crazy, it's, it can be anything, and you can just stick it up on the board. Ten minutes, as much as you can um, remember, or from notes that you took at the plant, or things that you remember from the article, the Jay-Z clip, one idea for a sticky note. And Take the knowledge that we already know, put it on paper, plus what we learned today from the water, waterworks plant. Put ourselves in those, our users' shoes, seeing their actions, what we heard from them, their feelings, and then their thoughts. Just put all the posters on the board, like in the category they are in, like come together as a group and just look at what, you know, each person in our group had to say about each category. How did the chemist actions, what do they do in that room? You could do each category for every single person that we talked about. The chemist, the control panel worker, the tour guide, the woman in Africa, Jay-Z. You could do that for every single person. So that's how, I mean, you could end up generating so, many, so much more. So in the defined stage, the students are taking all of the ideas, the, the things that they've learned in their interviews, their research, their observations, and doing a lot of synthesis, talking amongst each other about what's most important, uh, and then using that conversation to define a user and their need and um, an insight about that user and that need. Uh, so we call that a problem statement or a user need statement. She gonna get work for like four hours because it's a long trip. We go to school for eight, we're in school for eight hours. So she's up here doing all that half when we're in school. Needs. What are the different things this this girl or this woman needs? Needs a better source to find clean water, a water solution, and help to find better water. Great. Being dedicated. Young. Okay. Working. Young, working, dedicated. And very young. And she's providing water from a distance from her home for her family. And it's really important to hit on that specific need, so that because it's really it's actually easier to design when you're designing for a specific need. Our point of view statement was: young, working, dedicated Diana needs to get healthy, clean, fresh water for her family because of the lack of clean water in her community. 